Bread to Win, brought to you by Arrowfield, the home of four-time champion sire, Schnitzel. Hello, I'm Caroline Searcy. Welcome to a new week of Bread to Win. Coming to you from the Adelaide International Three Day Event or the Adelaide Equestrian Festival as it's now known, where a number of thoroughbreds are competing in the dressage, show jumping and cross country around Victoria Park. Coming up, we look at a slew of stallion announcements and a look at the backgrounds to the weekend's major winners. Case Clay of the famous Three Chimneys Farm family discusses the bloodstock links between Australia and America in his role as US rep for Arrowfield Stud. Henry Plumtree updates us on all things Cambridge Stud with more sire and racetrack success. And we wrap up with Arrowfield Stud's horsey major love racing. First though, another big week in breeding announcements in our Oshorse News. Four months out from the new stallion breeding season and some of the best sires in the land are having their service fees set and others are on the move. We start with reigning champion Australian stallion I Am Invincible who's had his service fee raised to $302,500 for the new season at Yarraman Park. Nine-time Group 1 winner Animo has been officially retired to the Dali stallion roster with a fee set at $121,000. Golden Rose and All Stakes winner Jackano has been retired to Widden Stud with his first season fee announced at $33,000. Widden also announced an increase to the fee for their star sire Zoo Star, rising to $220,000 this year. Victoria's Yulong Farm was excited to announce the acquisition of Pierata, the all-age stakes winning son of Piero, with racetrack earnings of $5.8 million as his first two-year-olds are set to hit the track in coming months, with a fee yet to be set. Invincible spirit son Shalal will move to Victoria's Woodside Park, where he'll stand at a fee of $22,000. The Lamont family's Karingal stud at Wagga Wagga welcomes Royal Ascot winning son of Fastnet Rock Merchant Navy from Coolmore stud not long after his daughter Steel City won the Magic Knight Stakes during the Sydney Autumn Carnival. He'll stand for $13,200 alongside another new Karingal sire finance tycoon. And Twin Hill stud has set the fee for their new stallion Blue Diamond Stakes winner Dormier. He will stand for $16,500 in his first season at their Cootamundra base. In New Zealand, Waikato Stud has announced a fee of $100,000 for their champion sire Savabeel, while Rich Hill Stud has announced a fee rise to $70,000 for Poisir. Here's Hawaii 5 0. Oh, he exploded. Saturday's racing featured the Hawkesbury standalone meeting at the foot of Sydney's Blue Mountains. The standout result from a pedigree point of view was the win of I Am Invincible's Hawaii 5 0 in the Group 3 Hawkesbury Guineas. A son of Coolmore Classic winner Aloha, the brother to Libertini, is a homebred for Jerry Harvey, who races the colt with old mates John Singleton and Ray Hadley. There were a number of Northern Hemisphere conceived winners on the day, with the most intriguing Hawkesbury Crown winner Princess Grace by Japanese bred Stormcat line sire Kara Conti. The multiple group winner in the US races for China Horse Club, having been bought for $1.7 million US at Fasig Tipton's Night of the Stars sale. Right you are, knows what winning's all about. He looms up to, he's a shocker. Saturday also saw three feature winners for So You Think, including Right You Are's narrow victory in the listed Mornington Cup at Victoria's feature meeting. Gaining a start in the 2023 Caulfield Cup with the win, Right You Are is raced by his breeders, the Merrimans, and is a son of Geelong Cup winner, Like a Dean. Lethal Thoughts took out the Mornington Guineas over the mile from star witness Mayor St Remy. And Street Gossip was the second stakes winner on the day for the Coolmore Sire in the listed Princess Stakes at Doombin from the Casino Prince Mayor Wang Wa, a $140,000 Magic Millions yearling. So You Think Now has 51 stakes winners and will again be a popular choice among Hunter Valley sires covering 211 mares in 2022. 
John and Helen North are handing over control of successful southwestern New South Wales farm Balness Stud to their daughter Joss and her husband with some great opportunities in the current English digital sale, including offspring of the young son of So You Think, D'Argento. The Inglis HTBA yearling sale was again topped by Matthew Samlum's Kingstar Farm, with the colt by capitalist from Princess Joy Joy selling for $280,000 to Derby Racing. And the outstanding Adelaide three-day event featured a number of high-class thoroughbreds aiming to compete in the Paris 2024 Olympics at one of only seven such events in the world. Sinead Lowings, who'll feature with Sam Woods on Thoroughbreds Argo in coming weeks, was successful in the four-star competition on full thoroughbred Bold Venture. The 12-year-old was unplaced in three starts in Western Australia and is by Sir Tristram's son Devaraja from a Zamazan line mare. Shane Rose, well known in racing circles for his highly regarded Bimberdine Park breaking pre-training and spelling operation in New South Wales, won his third five-star title at the Adelaide event on board warm blood thoroughbred cross Virgil. The win qualified the pair for the Paris Olympics. Virgil's dam is by Northern Dancer Line sire distinctly north from a mare who traces back through influential thoroughbred stallions Comoran and Showdown. Our G1 Goldmine analysis this week focuses on the breeding plans for broodmare owners. Here we focus on stallions by the late Not A Single Doubt, which have crossed so well with mares by the great influence More Than Ready at a rate of over 12% stakes winners to runners. Looking at sons of the former Arrowfield sire now at start, Anders, Dubious, Doubtland and Farnan. Tiger of Malay at Newgate Farm is one of these examples by not a single doubt from a more than ready mare, being one of seven stakes winners with this cross. With many options to send more than ready mares to these young stallions to achieve the same results. He leads by two. Last week's Quokka winners in WA, Bjorn Baker, Josh Parr and the Derby Racing Team combined for stake success at Hawkesbury on Saturday with our Inglis Graduate of the Week, Malkovich. The half-brother to both last week's James Carr stakes winner, Alentia, and to Wanderbar, Malkovich is by huge sprint influence, Schwazir, from the Anabar mare, Mabkara, and was an $85,000 Inglis Classic yearling on sold by Wood Park Stud to Derby Racing for $240,000 at the 2019 Ready to Race sale. Despite being brought up at Historic Three Chimneys Farm in the bluegrass Kentucky region of America, Case Clay has forged his own way as a bloodstock consultant around the world. Now the US rep for Arrowfield Stud, he has some interesting observations on the breeding industry. Welcome back to Australia. It's fabulous to see you here for the English Easter Yearling Sale. And you come from such a wonderful family history within thoroughbred breeding in America. Your father, Robert, Three Chimneys Farm. Tell us a bit about what it was like growing up around, you know, just some of the most magnificent thoroughbreds in the world. Well, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I feel very lucky having grown up in the, in the business at, at Three Chimneys. My parents started it when I was one year old, so grew up on the farm and he was in the fertilizer business and the horse business and then got full-time into the horse business, which I told him when I was in the fourth grade, I think this is a bad idea. <laughs> you have a family to support. But anyway, it worked out well. Um, and what really put Three Chimneys on the map was essentially a stroke of luck. Uh, Slua Gold was the first stallion there in 1984. And then Seattle Slew was, was a Triple Crown winner in 77. Uh, was at a different farm that went bankrupt and so the, the horse moved over to Three Chimneys which was a, which was a great stroke of luck for, for Three Chimneys. It was fun, it was a lot of fun to, to, to grow up around Seattle Slough and Rahi and Dinaformer and, and, and some great stallions. Uh, so yeah, I feel, feel very lucky. Yeah, and 
it's just a showpiece property, isn't it? I mean, these American stud farms are just out of this world, aren't they? I mean, the amount of attention to detail, not only sort of within the horse area, but, you know, the fencing and the whole thing, they're magnificent. They are. I, it's a lot of maintenance. Yes. It's a lot of maintenance, a lot of mowing, mowing grass and, and the fences. We feel kind of like it's a national park in, in central mm -hmm. Kentucky, and we're quite proud of it. Always trying to stop the developers from trying to push into the farmland because it's, it, it makes Kentucky unique within the United States. You did some work sort of within the farm, but you've gone off and done your own thing as well as a bloodstock agent. Yes, I have. So my family sold the farm, in two, the Three Chimneys, in 2014, and the new owners, uh, Brazilian owners, were very kind to me and they allowed me to have some outside clients in addition to what I did for Three Chimneys. Uh, I worked for the Massaras in 2003 so in 2015, became an American representative for Aerofield Stud. Um, John and Chris are amazing people to work, work for and, and uh, they treat so many people like family. And now I've gone out on my own. I worked for Three Chimneys for eight years after it was sold and kind of built that, built that client base and, and now, I'm, now I'm going out on my own. So I'm spending, we're selling a couple of yearlings here at the Easter sale. I'm very excited about, about the clients and, and the future. Of course, Harrowfield has the reputation with the stallions that have been built up for generations. You know, you go back through Dane Hill and then obviously Redoute's Choice as a, a multiple champion sire, Snitzel now as well, and the Autumn Sun coming through. What do you see, you know, from afar looking at those stallions? Because they really have been the best bloodline in Australia for, for generations They really now. have. When I was working for Aerofield in 2003, that was the year of Redoute's first crop. So I remember going to Wyong and seeing not a single doubt win the stakes race. And uh, so really have a, a great affinity for that line and Redutes and, and a love for him. Uh, we're selling, a, a, one of the partnerships I'm involved with is selling a colt uh, out of Maracaibo who's out of a Redutes Choice mare, which is a lot of fun for me. But yeah, if, if you can get as close as you can to that blood, try as, as hard as you can to get it. And the other colt we're selling is, is out of Kaviki. So there are two Dundeal colts we're selling. I'm really excited about Dundeal. I think the best is yet to come with Dundeal and, and very excited about, about that. And now the Autumn Sun. The, the Autumn Sun also, he, he has very few starters and he's got a group three winner and off to a very good start. Just excited to be associated with that Redutes bloodline. Yeah, well, you're dealing with, you know, the best in the biz, really, as far as, you know, Australia is concerned when you're talking about John and Chris Massara and Arrowfield Stud. But they have such a wonderful personal level in all their dealings with people, don't they? I they mean, they really treat do. everybody like family. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's such a great quality, and it's, it's, I feel lucky to be associated with them, for sure. Yeah. Well, tell us about the work you're doing as the, the um, US rep for Arrowfield. We're seeing so many more, you know, people really cottoning on to the, the fast American mares matched up with the best Australian stallions. But, yeah. you know, you've been working with in that for a long time now. Yes, um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So essentially buying mares in, in Kentucky and sending them down to, to Australia. And I've got some partnerships uh, that do that. And in those partnerships, there are, there are 23 people that have never owned a horse before. So I'm excited about that, bringing them down to Australia. And <clears throat> I mean, there's nothing like the racing here. The, with the, with the prize money here and the, I believe there's 84 races worth a million dollars or more compared to 50 something in the United States. And, and with the prize money being so exciting and, and high, um, I'm, I really wanna bring them down here, the partners, go racing, come to the sales, we're selling a couple here and, and really have fun with it. The good news is we've got HISA now, the Horse, Horse Racing Integrity Safety Alliance. That is uniform drug rules that matches the international federation. So we've finally just gotten that passed now. We think that that will positively change the, um, the perception of American racing. So we have one jurisdiction now instead of 38 different ones. So that's a positive. Another statistic I love down here is one in 400 something people own a horse a piece of a horse in Australia, and I think it's one in 10,000 in the United States. And Gunrunner, a superb performance in the Classic. And tell us about Gunrunner, of course, the 2017 Horse of the Year. He's covering theirs to Southern Hemisphere time. So how does that work, and how, how do you sort of engage interest from within Australian breeders? He's off to an incredible start. He had six Group 1 winners in his first crop. You know, Frankel did amazingly well up in the Northern Hemisphere, and he's done really, really well down here. So that's an effort and hopefully we can get that done that's I, I left three chimneys in December but they're a client so um, helping them trying to get more 
mares and foal to gun runner to come down to Australia. It's such an international business, you know, with, with the Japanese doing so well in the Middle East, and, and it's really a fun time. Uh, and, and also, we've had American horses, um, Conte Portiro, come down here, and Lighthouse. Yep. And so it, it's, it's a really sporting um, exercise, really, of, hey, our horses is, are you know, really good up here. Let's go try Australia with the best sprinters in the world <laughs> and see how we fare. And if, we, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I love that, that sporting part of it. The timing of the championships with this sale is, is, is some of the best racing in, in, in the world, and, and you're here at the sales as well. Case Clay, a great ambassador for Arrowfield Stud and American Racing. Coming up after the break, Henry Plumtree with the latest news from Cambridge Stud. Cheval d'Or, the favourites, taking the lead. The Cambridge Stud performance of the week was the win by Cheval d'Or in the Group 3 Trelawney Stud Championship Stakes at Pukekohe on Saturday. By Cambridge sire Al Manzor, she's a half-sister to three-time Group 1 winner the Bostonian and was a $420,000 NZB yearling sold by Waikato Stud to trainer Tony Pike and the Oaks Stud. Cheval d'Or is now on a Queensland Oaks path and was the eighth stakes winner for Al Manzor, who also had Northern Hemisphere bred convener, a four-year-old entire, win over 2,000 metres at Victoria's meeting at Mornington. It's fair to say New Zealand's Cambridge Stud has come a long way since it was sold by founder Sir Patrick Hogan to Brendan and Joe Lindsay. As Henry Plumtree explains, the sires are settling into a great routine with plenty of success and more to come. But down towards the line, too good. What you wish for is what you get sometimes. The filly by El Manzor, number nine, Cheval d'Or, for the Oak Stud and Tony Pike. Henry, it's been a wonderful past 12 months or so for Cambridge Stud. I mean, it's sensational seeing the deeds of the El Manzors on the track. And, and the farm is really consolidating now after several years of, you know, new brood mares and, and, you know, a whole new feel to the place. We've come a long way in five years. Um, that's largely thanks to the people that are involved in the various departments on the studs and you know, the development side of things and the purchasing of mares and bringing those young people into the team and, and developing them as well. I think we're showing the fruits of that now. We've got a great team up here at Caracas, a great team back on the studs, you know, and the racing stable. So consolidation time, you know what the racing industry is like, you can never stand still but we're just going to slow down a little bit now and worry about the next chapter. You mentioned Al Manzor and, you know, it's, having a Derby winner and a Caracas Million winner in your first crop is exciting for us, you know, and he's they're still selling very well. The trainers still want them. Um, he could be, could be a very important part of the next five years. That, that must be a real sort of pressure release to see him getting those results from his first crop. Well, we're only as good as the people who buy them. There's been a lot of goodwill and a lot of support. Uh, now, you would argue that trainers won't go and buy or an agent won't go and buy a horse he doesn't like just to support you. So obviously there were good physicals, but we've got a spread of horses across New Zealand and Australia with great trainers, and that's a great start. He's a very important part of the future. Hello Hume's own is going to be just as important, and it's a nice connection with Harris Etraham, in France with Nico de Chambure. Nice to have that connection with him again with a second horse. Everyone's asking us when, when our next horse is going to arrive. Well, the answer is he's not going to arrive anytime soon. We just need to see 
uh, a fundamental shift in the broodmare numbers in New Zealand before we start investing in another horse. She's all class three quarters, Argentia, Exolita, Mega Mare, late. And the racehorses too, in the, the golden black checks, Exolita, Pinarellos and, and, and Polygons, and there are so many others that are coming through. Some were bred or some were bought as yearlings. All the pieces of the jigsaw are sort of piecing together. I think, I think so, and I think, you know, we're in a performance-based industry. If they're not winning races, if those black and gold checks are not there in the winner's enclosure every now and again, we're, still, we're doing something wrong. Pinarello and um, Polygon were both homebreds uh, out of mares that we own. I mean, obviously, Pinarello's mother has produced four stakes winning horses, one black, one group one, one group two, another group three. Zonza, she's a bit of a blue hen. Polygon's mother, we couldn't get her in foal. That's why she went to Highly Recommended, who was very fertile and he got her in foal one jump. And we said last year when yearling time came up with her, if you put her in the ring, she's probably gonna make 50 or 60 grand and she's a beautiful type. So we made a decision to race her and put her with Lance and you know, she's just gone from strength to strength. Exolita was another great story because one of our biggest supporters in New Zealand is Trelawney Stud and she was one of the first fillies we bought at Easter in 2018. Paid a bit of money for her. She had a beautiful pedigree, obviously, last spring. She's won a group two, she's group one placed. It's been good for us, it's been good for the Hayes boys. It's great for Trelawney, who's got a half-brother here by Two Down Hot, what we call a talking horse. It is building on, you know, new generations of history from what the great Sir Patrick, the late great Sir Patrick Hogan set up, of course, at Cambridge Stud. And the, the heritage centre you've set up, I mean, I must say, the statue of Sir Tristram is, I mean, I couldn't take my eyes off it. It's, it's unbelievable to look at, isn't it? With, with Patrick opening it, that was a bit of a pinnacle for Brennan and Joe in terms of the development of the stud because everything that we're trying to achieve now and in the future and acknowledging the past was in that heritage centre. And it's all upgradable. It's all set up so that we can add pieces to it and add bits to it. But when the old boy came and opened it with the family, with Justine, it was an incredible day for everybody. And he was very emotional, the old man. And um, he's come up two or three times last year we were very lucky to see him on a number of occasions. The Queen's funeral, we had a big event at Cambridge Stud for the NZTBA because she was the patron and Patrick was front and centre at that. He came for half an hour and he stayed all morning, which was, he did all the interviews, TV interviews, which was wonderful. We saw him once more after that and, you know, I'm sure he's here. Well, <laughs> when we're walking we'll these walk colts up and down here, Sometimes they stop at that fence and look at it, and I'm oh, sure funny. he's wandering up behind that fence, banging his catalogue, saying, yeah, get up there. <laughs> this remains the most important sale for any New Zealand breeder, and the national sale is part of that whole tapestry of the breeding industry. If you don't have a national sale, you're on the way out. That's my view. A lot of people would disagree with me, but I'm so old I can remember what happened in Ireland when Golfs decided they were going to move their operation to Newmarket and it fell absolutely flat on its face. You must have a national identity at home. It's a long time I've been coming to New Zealand and watching the relationship between Australia and New Zealand. There's a huge competition there, whether it's rugby, whether it's cricket, whether it's racing, but there is also a brotherly thing going on there, you know, um, maybe big brother and little brother, but they look after each other and they complement each other, I think. A great mix of old success and new at Cambridge Stud. Coming up after the break, Arrowfield Studs, horse who made you love racing. When I was a, a young fellow growing up, I mean, my father was a hobby trainer, so we always had a couple of horses in work, you know, nothing of great shakes, but I, I always had a love for, for, for Kingston Town. 
and um, I just 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 to always you know try and work out when he was racing and always try and watch. We never had never had the, on TV on free to air in them days. So it's just a matter of getting the radio, listening to the race, getting the Sunday Mail the next day, and you know. So he he was just fantastic, and for me. I became a jockey, an apprentice jockey, and uh, to Colin Hayes. And um, I remember going to have a ride in Melbourne one day, and and I was sitting next to Malcolm Johnson, and Tommy Smith came in. I'm thinking, oh, you know, this is just too good for me, you know. And it's just what, as a young kid growing up, it just got me there. Yeah, it's the hero status. A horse like Kingston Town coming back year after year, and the hero status, as you said, even the, the individuals involved, Tommy and, and Malcolm Johnson, and and that's what people, I guess, these days are looking at too. When you're looking at in, wanting to engage them in in racing in a career. Yeah, exactly right. I'm, I'm think that you've got to have a hero, don't you? You've got to have something that stands out. And, and Kingston Town, probably the first horse to crack the million dollars, but as a kid that probably was of little interest to me. It was more of the fact that he was going the races he was winning and, um, and he was winning all the big races, you know, and it was just something I just really loved seeing. That's all for this week's Bread to Win. Don't miss next week's show as we profile this year's exciting English Chairman's Sale offering, the now Group 1 winning mare Ice Bath and her loving strapper. And one of Global Breeding's most influential individuals, Sir Peter Vella of New Zealand Bloodstock, with his thoughts on the industry worldwide. Don't miss that one. I'm Caroline Searcy. I look forward to seeing you then. Bread to Win, brought to you by Arrowfield, the home of four-time champion sire, Snitzel. <laughs>